Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dorota Iskra. And uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for uh, having a chance to present here. I will be talking about the importance of data and chatbot design. So before the next slide arrives, um, I got interested in uh, speech and language technology when I was back at university doing my degree, which was many, many years ago. And I have been active in this space since then, uh, initially doing research and then working on applications for uh, various companies. For the last seven years, I've been working for Appen. Sorry. Yep. Okay. Um, a company you may have heard of. Uh, at Appen, we collect and label data uh, and, uh, for various types of AI in the broadest sense of the word. So it could be speech technology, language technology, computer vision, and other types of machine learning. Um, we do notice that many companies these days have their own data, but this data is usually unstructured. Um, we help clients to bring structure into this data by providing various types of uh, annotations, and these could range from like simple orthographic transcriptions through maybe drawing bounding boxes on images to highly specialist linguistic annotations for uh, syntax, um, prosody, etc. And if the companies don't have their own data, we collect it for them. And this could be speech, text, images, video, and for anything sort of language related, we can do it in over 180 languages. So what are the data issues for, for chatbots? Um, I assume that most of you in this room have probably used the chatbot. Um, how many of you have tried building one? Not as many as I was expecting to see. <laughs> um, and have many of you struggled due to the lack of uh, suitable data to build a chatbot? Did you have any issues? Um, I'm sure you have if you tried. Um, I used to work on uh, dialogue design for call center applications uh, many years ago. Um, and we built the first large scale call routing applications in the Netherlands, in Dutch. These were very exciting times. But also the pressure was enormous to try and come up with something that worked well. Um, I don't know if the techniques to do this kind of work have changed a lot since then. But what we did, we tried to sit together with a couple of experts, so-called experts, and uh, come up with a dialogue design that would work, that would elicit the right answers from the users. And when I say right, I mean the kind of answers that a speech recognition engine would be able to cope with, but also the kind of answers that the application logic would be able to cope with and like, move the dialogue to the next step. Um, why am I telling you this? I imagine that developing chatbots, you probably face similar issues. Um, so there is no initial data to bootstrap the system because the application is usually completely new. Even if you try to reuse data from other sources, it's usually quite difficult because in order for this data to be useful, it really needs to be specific to a certain application, uh, domain, maybe even client or a product. <clears throat> um, and I guess what you can do, you can listen to like call center dialogues, or you can collect web queries. But as I'm sure you also realize is that because this is a different type of interaction, 
people will tend to express themselves differently. Well, the solution to uh, these issues is collecting data from a number of potential users based on scenarios, and this is uh, what we've been doing for a number of years now. So we can um, collect use case specific data where we develop scenarios which refer to a specific application, specific domain, clients using product names. Um, and this could be anything. This could be banks, insurance companies, travel agencies, uh, you name it. And um, we do it through our crowd. Um, so we select a group of uh, users according to client demographics. And typically we would balance for things like gender and age. Um, we would select people from certain geographical regions if needed. But let's say that the client base is, I don't know, maybe 75% males uh, over the age of 50 uh, living in Bavaria. Um, I'm not sure what kind of product this would be, but we can definitely find a population that uh, matches these criteria. So first of all, we need to determine what is the interaction. Is this um, based on text? Is this based on voice? Uh, if we need to record speech, we usually need to provide some other types of annotations, so maybe orthographic transcription if the data collection is not fully scripted, uh, but maybe also different types of tagging. So uh, perhaps we need to tag product names in the, uh, in the utterances, or maybe we need to tag for intent. Sometimes these tags are predefined, but even if, uh, if they are predefined, the speakers don't always behave in such a way as you expect them to be, so you, need to, uh, you may need to make some revisions. And what is really important in such a project, in such a data collection project, is to develop really good scenarios. And this is something that we do in close cooperation with our clients, since the clients are obviously the ones that know their business best. Um, but what we do is advise on how to formulate them in such a way as to elicit expected utterances from, from the users. Um, and then we run the data collection with a crowd um, that's selected according to the demographics in the way I just described earlier. Um, so for example, if um, a function or intent, whatever you want to call it in your application, has something to do with switching on air conditioning, users may formulate their intent in different ways. They may say, for example, um, I'm too hot. Um, could you switch on the air conditioning? Could you lower the temperature? So there's obviously different ways of saying the same thing. And we try to encourage our users to formulate as many different, well, not as many different answers as possible, but several different answers to just get a variety of material of training data. Um, and depending on the kind of results that we get, we can go through multiple iterations of this process. So we can refine the scenarios and then put them out to the crowd again to get some more specific data. So what are the results? For our clients, this is time saved on data collection, which allows them to uh, focus on other things that they are probably better at, which is application development and technology development. Um, we give them access to language expertise because usually, uh, especially sort of in, uh, for global companies, you usually have knowledge of, of a limited number of languages. We can do it in a, in a large number. Um, and we uh, can help them not just like localize the dialogue in a traditional way, but we can help them to localize the application by doing this kind of data collections in various languages at the same time. And the benefits for the end customer, who is our client's client, or maybe our client's client's client, um, the quality of interaction is, is better from the start, from day one. It usually results in higher conversion rates, and all in all, in 
better and higher customer satisfaction. So this is something we've been doing at Appen for over 20 years for a large number of applications in uh, over 180 languages. And uh, if you haven't seen us yet, we have a booth outside there, so please stop by. Um, we have a case study um, on data collection for a, specifically for a chatbot application for Flamingo, which we have written up, so I'll be happy to share a copy with you and give you more details if you're interested. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>